AdFreeShows.com is wrestling nostalgia, podcasts on video, and live interactive experiences. It's also a great way to get to know the voices and characters of your childhood, but it's so much more. The Podfather, Conrad Thompson, has recorded over 25 Ask Conrad episodes where he answers your questions from wrestling to mortgages and everything in between. It's your opportunity to get inside the head of the most powerful man in wrestling, not named McMahon or Khan. Conrad often says we are more than listeners. We are community, even family. Take a listen to the recent interaction between the Podfather and one of our top guys, Antonio. And by the way, Antonio, thanks for all your great questions. I feel like you bring the noise with great questions every single week, and I really appreciate your support. That makes my job a lot easier. Because sometimes I'll do a bunch of research on a show and I'll have some folks help me do some research on a show. We'll have a blind spot, but guys like you and Rajiv and a wrestling historian, I mean, there's always a handful of you folks who always, I'm like, oh, I know if I see a question from him, it's going to be a good one. And you're one of those guys. Thank you for that. Oh, I appreciate it, man. I definitely do. Hey, hey, Connor, at day 22 sober for Antonio. That's awesome, man. Keep up the good work. Congratulations. That's a big deal. Become part of the family now. Make the decision to become a member of ad-free shows and enjoy Ask Conrad and so many other exclusive shows and events. So sign up today, join the fastest growing wrestling community over at adfreeshows.com. Hey man, you ever make a mistake? Maybe even worse, ever see one of your parents, like your mom, make a mistake and they're going through a nightmare situation and there's really nothing you can do to help them? Save with Conrad.com to the rescue. Let me explain. James in Tinley Park, Illinois, hooked us up with a five star review and had this to say. The entire process was very easy. My mom and sister both used other mortgage companies, and it was a nightmare for them. And they had so much stress and multiple closing date changes that I was preparing for the worst. I heard about First Family through Grilling JR. I read a lot of reviews and felt this was the best for me. I couldn't be happier. David and Diane made the process very easy. I couldn't have asked for better support. Thank you all so much. I'm a homeowner and it feels great. That's right. James is a homeowner and you can be too. By the way, as a homeowner, your house is going to appreciate most every year, which means you have a real asset and you're not just throwing your money away on rent. Even better than that. At the end of the year, you're going to get a tax statement saying, here's all the interest you paid on your mortgage. And boom, you can write that off. Do you get something like that from your landlord? Uh Uh-uh. He just keeps your money and you have nothing to show for it. Stop throwing your money away and go to savewithconrad.com right now. And oh, by the way, you don't need perfect credit to do this. Even credit scores in the 500s can be approved. And by the way, even if you're not approved, we're going to get you a game plan to get you out of that apartment and into a new house. I also want to mention you don't need a huge down payment. You may have heard the old wise tale that you've got to have 20% down. That's not it. You can do this with 5% down, 3% down. We even have loan programs with no money down. Find out how easy it is to become a homeowner right now at savewithconrad.com. NLS number 65084, equal housing lender. Hey, tell your landlord to kick rocks and go to savewithconrad.com right now. We hope you are enjoying classic 1986 Jim Crockett promotions here on What Happened When. And be sure to check out all the great shirts and gimmicks that were inspired by our trip down memory lane. Whether you are a weasel slapper, a rendezvous master, a hell person, or a legend that was born and not made, we have a shirt or gimmick for you. Check out LoisRules.com for all the shirts and BoxyGimmicks.com for all the other goodies, including specialty clothing, mugs, tumblers, show posters, and more. That's LoisRules.com and BoxyGimmicks.com. I love talking about our friend, Steven Singer. I'll tell you the competition must really hate this guy. He just makes the experience of buying a diamond better and better. And he makes it fun. Steven is the very first to offer each and every customer the perfect price. That's right. Have you ever wondered if you're getting the best price? Are you uncomfortable negotiating? Head to Steven Singer Jewelers and you're guaranteed to get the perfect price. You'll never pay more than a guy sitting next to you. And here's a little insider tip. Most jewelers mark their merchandise way up just to mark it down to make you feel like you're getting a deal. The guy next to you may be paying less. Do you want the most important purchase of your life to be based on your negotiating skills? Not the case at Steven Singer because at Steven Singer jewelers, you're guaranteed to get the perfect price all day, every day, 365 days a year. That's why we trust Steven Singer. 
He makes the experience of buying a diamond so easy. So check out Steven Singer Jewelers at the other corner of 8th and Walnut in Philly or online at IHateStevenSinger.com. Steven Singer Jewelers, one place, one price. Do you own or rent your home? Sure you do. And I bet it can be hard work. But you know what's easy? Bundling policies with GEICO. GEICO makes it easy to bundle your homeowner's or renter's insurance along with your auto policy. It's a good thing, too, because you already have so much to do around your home. Go to Geico.com, get a quote, and see how much you could save. It's Geico easy. Visit Geico.com today. That's Geico.com. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main event. Welcome to WHW Monday. Tony Schiavone and Conrad Thompson. First arcade, 605 NWA, TV title, Cajun on the the bunk house stampede. Flair and Horseman, Garvin, Bogey, Magnum, Dusty, Express Tag Team, Turner, Bond, and Mid-South Joy World Championship Wrestling. Talking about the great years of World Championship Wrestling, the NWA and Jim Crockett Promotions. Tony and first North, they win, look, Shivani's back again. World title split off, center stage, Bischoff, Disney, Hogan, and Nitro, New World Order, and the Crow, Thunder Russo, Arcade. Catch him, Vinny Mac, simulcast. Tony's back with Conrad, not your classy podcast. Watch a long try not to laugh, lowest rules cat back. This wasn't the initial plan, Tom Zing's a good looking man. Quondike Bill, make a chair. Tommy, you come over here. What happened when? WHW Monday. And now, let's go to the ring, and here's your co host, Hey Hey. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson, and you're listening to What Happened When? With the voice of your childhood, Tony Schiavone. Tony, what's going on, man? How are you? Staying safe, staying healthy, had your shot, no viruses, doing great. Any diarrhea? How's everybody doing? Getting a heart on? Good. Wow. I like that little preamble to get us going today. I want to take a time out before we get going. We got a lot to unpack here, just real life sort of housekeeping stuff. Today, we are going to be watching world championship wrestling from March 15th, 1986. So if you haven't already fire up your WWE network, click on in ring, scroll down until you see world championship wrestling, click that, then select 1986 from the drop down, And you want to find March 15th. It shows a one hour, 26 minute runtime. And Tony and I are going to watch along with you, but we should just go ahead and address the elephant in the room right up front. No, I'm not talking about Stan. I'm talking about the idea that. The migration from the WWE network to Peacock, at least here in America, allegedly won't be complete until right before SummerSlam. And I've seen mixed reviews or mixed statements as to whether or not it will just be all the pay-per-views or if all the old Crockett TV will be there as well. So you and I have been peppered with questions. What are we going to do about our 1986 watch alongs? And the answer is we don't know. Don't know. Uh, I know that sounds like, uh, disappointing. I'm sure to some of you, but we don't have any inside information as to what, or will not be available on the WWE network. Uh, yes, we could probably, you know, ask Bruce or text events, but th- they probably have more important stuff going on with WrestleMania around the corner. So we're just going to wait and see that being said, we're going to try to get ahead as, as, as many as we can, but there's no way we can knock out all of 86 before SummerSlam. So we're going to do our best, but if we have to call an audible, we'll press pause. And then we'll do our silly shit. We always do. And then we'll come back and pick up where we left off. Right. Yeah. Um, why don't we just bootleg some of this shit? Oh no. Here's the thing we can, I want to be clear. I've got every episode, uh, but that doesn't mean that folks at home would have a way to watch along with us. They could hear us, but I want, listen, I think eventually, I don't know, but I think eventually this footage will be populated again. And by the way, if you're international, from what we understand, nothing changes for you. So I'm a little jealous, but if I'm, if I'm also honest, Tony, I feel like if that's the case and international fans keep the WWE network exactly as it is, if that rumor is true, then there's going to be a whole bunch of smart internet geeks, people smarter than me or you who can say, oh, well, just use this VPN and it'll make believe you're in Manila and then it'll take your $10 PayPal and you can still, 
we'll figure out what that is, but yeah. we want to present 1986 in its best form possible. And I think it's best enjoyed when you're at home watching along with us. So we'll figure it out. Uh, we might, you know, adjust the format a little bit here on WHW. I've got some ideas, but to say that we have a firm concrete plan would just not be honest. Uh, we didn't really expect that all of that stuff would go away. I sort of thought they'd been working on all of this and it would just be, you know, a different login. Well, I would think, and I don't have all the, the research, nor do you, and I'm sure somebody does. I would think that the old stuff where you click in ring and you go down, you look at all the old TBS stuff and you look at all the old uh, territory stuff, I would think it's pretty, it's pretty good for them. Now I, I know it's not anything like WWE fans out there watching the current stuff. I get that. I understand, but I would think there's a place where fans wanting nostalgia. That's why they put it up in the first place. So I yeah. think there's some, some things out there that tell them, Hey, we should keep, we should at least, I don't know. We, we should put it on. So I, that's what I think. Uh, but I've been wrong before. The rumor in innuendo is that, uh, it is a tiny percentage of the audience that actually looks at the old stuff. Everybody is consumed with obviously the new pay-per-views, but the new WWE specials and new releases. So whatever's new and out in front of you. And that makes sense because it's not like they're really promoting the old stuff with our, um, all the hype we've built around Crockett era stuff this year. So far, I had more than a few people say, man, why don't you and Tony just figure out a way to buy the JCP library? I don't think that's happening folks. No, uh, I, I have, I have many, many other great ways to piss away my money and I'm not doing it there. I, I just, I can't imagine a scenario where Vince would ever turn that loose. Yeah, I mean, me neither. I know he valued once upon a time, the traffic that we drove there, but their whole model's changing. But as to what will happen with our model, we're not sure, but we will be transparent with you and we will be honest with you. But it's funny, Tony, that was announced. And within minutes I had, so Conrad, I know you have a plan. What's your plan, bro. Mm -hmm. I found out the same time you did. We don't yeah. know. Well, maybe we'll just watch some of the current WWE stuff and shit on that. Uh, no, that doesn't really tickle my fancy. I, I'm going to take a pass on that. Hey, I do want to mention too, a little peek behind the curtain. You and I put a bunch of shows in the can before we got together in Jacksonville in real life. But today is the first day we've been able to talk, you know, on air yep. about that experience. We recorded quite a bit of bonus stuff for adfreeshows.com. How would you describe our, our sort of table for four with me and Eric Bischoff and Jim Ross and yourself, if you had to describe that when that drops, what well, what should be the description? Hysterical. Yeah. I mean, LOL funny. If I can use that term, Bischoff I, couldn't catch his breath and you had to take your glasses off to wipe the tears away. Jr. was on another level. It's, uh, it is the Jr. that you and I talk about behind the curtain all yeah. the time. Yeah. That's just an absolute wonderful curmudgeon, entertaining motherfucker. Yeah. Just follow him around with a camera. Click or yeah. forward. Yeah. He just, <laughs> the way he can phrase things. Oh God. It's the best. It's just amazing. So it, it was a lot of fun. And I had thought I, you know, you and I talked about this beforehand. I had thought that there would, because there was some heat there. There was when Jr. left and Eric took over. Right. I had thought it was a bad idea. Right. I, I told you, I said, maybe that's not so good to do that because I don't want them to get into one of their big arguments, but Eric's beyond that. Yeah. You know, he didn't care. He, he really is. He's really beyond that. And, uh, and, and really Jr. is too. Yeah. So it, it worked. It was, it was uh, another peek behind the curtains. Uh, the curtain is that we had to get Jr. to this location. <laughs> and, <laughs> that was a fucking adventure just to get him there. And I thought, Oh, by the time he gets here, he's going to be so fucking miserable. And he really wasn't, he was, but he wasn't as miserable as I thought. He just had to get it, it out of his system. Right. And we knew what to do. You have that man, a BLT ready. Mm -hmm. And you have him some Moscow mules and a rare mm -hmm. bottle of crown Royal and you're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. It'd be fine amongst other things. Yeah. And so, uh, it was just, uh, it was a great night. It was an unforgettable night. And I can't wait to share that with, with our fans on ad free shows. I really can't. And starting next week, 
Uh, we've got three weeks worth of WrestleMania countdown gold. I'm pretty excited about this. I don't know that we necessarily want to reveal it yet, but you and Jr. had some fun and people are going to really dig this. Are they not? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and again, uh, pat on the back, Jr. He came through for us. He really did. Did some good, did some good work for us. And I'm really, really happy and really proud to be able to bring you that stuff. So we got some good stuff coming up here, uh, within the next couple of weeks, months, and, uh, I'm very excited about it. And, you know, sometimes, uh, you've done this before we go to Jacksonville, you guys come to see a couple of shows and, uh, sometimes it doesn't go as planned. Yeah. Kind of like an exploding ring. Sometimes it doesn't go as planned. Right. Occasionally. Occasionally. But, uh, in the end it all works out and it did, and it did on many levels. So there you go. I also want to mention, uh, the dynamite I got to be there for happened to be the dynamite where Tully Blanchard returned to television in ring mm -hmm. action, mm -hmm. wearing his old United States championship title around his old robe. And of course, flanked by FTR wearing the old Crockett tag straps mm -hmm. and how poetic is it, Tony, that on the day. The JJ Dillon and Tully Blanchard and those old Jim Crockett belts were back on a Turner station in prime time. That's the very day that Mr. Crockett passed away. It's kind of like the, uh, universe aligned. It is. And it, it's, uh, it was sad that Jimmy passed away. I, I think I mentioned this, that I spoke to him a few days before he passed away, uh, which was very difficult to do, but good. You, you actually didn't talk about that on this show. We put all the shows in the can before he passed away. So I know okay. you appeared on Jericho's podcast. It's funny. He asked me to be on that show. And I said, man, I'll be driving back home that day, but you should get Shivani. And he's like, oh, I didn't think about that. So I'm glad you were on there because yeah. you know, you sort of credit Mr. Crockett with your whole wrestling career, right? Well, well, yeah, you got to, because he's the one that said, okay, let's use him. Right. He could have said, he could have said no. And then I'd be stuck doing minor league baseball the rest of my life or something to that effect. Uh, and be broke, but he's the one that absolutely said, okay, I want to use you on doing uh Ric Flair, right? I want to use you on doing promos in the back as we all called it. And I'm going to use you on TBS. So it was his decision to make. So yeah, he's the one that started my career without him. I would not be a wrestling announcer. I don't think because it just so happened I didn't seek out becoming a wrestling announcer until I realized that the baseball team I was working for was Jim Crockett promotions. Right. So I don't think I would have, uh, looked at becoming a wrestling announcer had it not been for Jim Crockett and him saying, yes. So I owe him everything. I've talked about this before. I owe his family, uh, everything. I, uh, I of course have talked to David. I called Jackie and talked with him. I called Francis and talked with her. Uh, all of them to give my condolences. And I got to talk to Jimmy when he was in the hospital a few days before he passed away. Cause David called and said, Jimmy wants to talk to you. That's a tough thing, man. When you hear that and you yeah. know, the end is near and he could not, uh, I told him, I said, I hate, I said, I, it's wonderful talking with you. And I'm so, so sorry about your health decline. And he said, well, it, it happens. It's going to happen to everybody. And I said, yes, sir. And then I went on to tell him how much I thought I, he and his family, and he did not answer. And I said a couple more things and he did not answer. And so David said, okay, Tony, uh, we, we hear you. Thanks very much. And I said, okay. And I hung up. Then I texted David later. I said, did he hear and understand everything I said? And he said, yes, he just couldn't formulate an answer quickly enough. Mm -hmm. So he did hear it. And that's, uh, that's good stuff. Uh, the fact that he passed away is obviously not, but the fact that he passed away on the same day that we had uh, Tully and we saw Arn come out with the four horsemen and, and JJ and the old belts. That's cool. Uh, that is cool. That's uh, that, that's going to be, it's going to be, it's another way to just mark that day down in your calendar and say, yeah, I remember that day. It was a special day in wrestling. So. You know, I don't want to, uh, be a shill, but I also want to mention that, uh, Chris on our team put together an incredible tribute video that, uh, we played at the end of our conversation with Mr. Crockett on adfreeshows.com, but it was so good. I thought, man, I just need to put this out for everybody to see. So I put it on my Instagram. It's at, Hey, Hey, it's Conrad Thompson. And I sent it to you. Uh, I, I don't know, maybe two or three days before we posted it. And I also sent it to the Crockett family and they were thrilled with it. And, um, 
you know, it's a weird time. You know, I know I'm probably sharing a little too much here, but even now, you know, they're not, they don't have a real plan as of yet for Mr. Crockett because of COVID. And yeah. unfortunately, uh, Mr. Crockett's widow, Myra, her uh-huh. father has passed away since as well. Uh-huh. So uh-huh. she's lost her father and her husband back to back in, in a COVID era. So I, I was thinking maybe I'll post this video when we know that he's officially situated. I don't know. Yeah. I had a memorial for him or whatever they planned to do. Let's celebrate him that day one more time. But since we didn't know, I thought I should, I don't want to sit on this anymore. I just want to share this because I'm so proud of it. And I know you're not exact. You're more of a Bob Seger fan more than the highway man, but Mm -hmm. man, Chris hit a home run on that video. Did he not buddy? Yeah. Uh, Chris, uh, Chris McDonald is, uh, the, uh, the low key, uh, MVP of this company. Yes, totally. Yeah. Uh, what a, what a talented kid. Uh, he's Canadian. We'll forgive but him a for talented that. kid. We'll, we'll yeah. For- we'll forgive him for that, yeah. but he is. And, uh, uh, has he stopped answering the phones for a hospital late at night? Uh, I think he's doing it only part-time now for the last two huh? weeks. He's full-time with us, baby. Woo. There you go. Good stuff. Listen, if you haven't already go check it out. You know, if you want to see the Crockett interview, I would love for you to, it's at adfreeshows.com. It feels weird to promote that right now. We did our best to pay tribute to him. I'm so, I feel so lucky and so privileged to have the opportunity to talk to him. And, you know, it's funny. I, I don't mean to be all sappy, but I told the guys when we were in Jacksonville, I said, you know, when we first sort of launched this whole conversations with Conrad series, I think we all thought it was for Jim Hurd because Jim Hurd had just been a recluse for 30 years. But in reality, given the timing of everything, it was undoubtedly for Jim Crockett. Mm-hmm. I mean, if we would have waited two weeks to get that interview, it wouldn't have been possible. Right. But the idea that he got to tell his story with class and dignity and share his sort of lifeline. I mean, what a nice thing that will be for the family and the grandkids. And Hey, I mean, I wish I had that for my grandfather and I don't know, I'm just really proud of it. And I got to know him as a person, you know, that day and just spend the day with him and it was phenomenal. So it was the best experience I've had. Most important thing we've done for sure in wrestling. And, uh, it's over at adfreeshows.com. But even if that's not really your jam and I get it, uh, go check me out on Instagram. Uh, hey, Hey, it's Conrad Thompson. And just watch that video. I'm not plugging it for likes or follows. I couldn't give a rip less, but I think you need to see the video to understand the context of what he meant to us. And uh, I just thought it was a great song and, and Chris did a home run job and I hope everybody checks it out. And I hope that you're here with us today to go relive some of the good times, man. 1986, March 15th. If you're a business owner, you don't need Conrad and I to tell you that running the business is tough, but you might be making it harder on yourself than necessary. Don't let QuickBooks and spreadsheets slow you down anymore. It's time to upgrade to NetSuite. You probably know by now that many systems don't give you the information you need when you need it. So stop. Ditch the spreadsheets and all that old software that you've outgrown. Now, and I mean now, is the time to upgrade to NetSuite by Oracle, the world's number one cloud business system. NetSuite gives you visibility and control over your financials, HR, inventory, e-commerce, and more. Everything you need, all in one place, instantaneously. Whether you're doing a million or hundreds of million in revenue, save time and money with NetSuite. So join the over 24,000 companies using NetSuite right now. Let NetSuite show you how they'll benefit your business with a free product tour at netsuite.com slash WHW. Schedule your free product tour right now at netsuite.com slash WHW. NetSuite.com slash WHW. I love talking about our friend, Steven Singer. I'll tell you the competition must really hate this guy. He just makes the experience of buying a diamond better and better. And he makes it fun. Steven is the very first to offer each and every customer, the perfect price. That's right. Have you ever wondered if you're getting the best price? Are you uncomfortable negotiating? Head to Steven Singer Jewelers and you're guaranteed to get the perfect price. You'll never pay more than a guy sitting next to you. And here's a little insider tip. Most jewelers mark their merchandise way up just to mark it down, to make you feel like you're getting a deal. The guy next to you may be paying less. Do you want the most important purchase of your life to be based on your negotiating skills? Not the case at Steven Singer. 
Because at Steven Singer Jewelers, you're guaranteed to get the perfect price all day, every day, 365 days a year. That's why we trust Steven Singer. He makes the experience of buying a diamond so easy. So check out Steven Singer Jewelers at the other corner of 8th and Walnut in Philly or online at IHateStevenSinger.com. Steven Singer Jewelers, one place, one price. So the Shivani family is pretty darn big. Me and Lois, five kids, six grandchildren, and count them, seven dogs. Yeah, that's a lot. This past Christmas, we only had five grandchildren, and I was thinking a way to be able to get everybody together. It was difficult because of the pandemic, but I found a way to bring us all together at once, safely. And that's where PaintYourLife.com came in. With PaintYourLife.com, you get a professional hand-painted portrait created by any photo or combination of any photos at a truly affordable price. So that was able to get everybody together. Send in a picture of me and Lois, the five kids, the grandchildren, all the dogs. And we came up with this big Shivani portrait. With PaintYourLife.com, you can choose from a team of world-class artists and work with them until every detail is perfect. User-friendly platforms online let you order a custom-made, hand-painted portrait in less than five minutes. And that's a quick and easy process. You can get a hand-painted portrait in about three weeks. It makes a beautiful gift for your birthday, your wedding, your anniversary, or even what happened for us during the holidays. Our artists really capture the essence of the Shivani family. And buddy, that's hard to do. <laughs> Believe you me. But at Paint Your Life, there are no risks. If you don't love the final painting, your money is refunded, guaranteed. And right now, as a limited time offer, get 20% off your painting. That's right, 20% off and free shipping to boot. To get the special offer, text the word WHEN, that's W-H-E-N, to 64,000. That's WHEN, W-H-E-N, to 64,000. Text WHEN to 64,000. Paint your life. Celebrate the moments that matter most. Terms apply. Available at paintyourlife.com slash terms. Again, text WHEN to 64,000. I've got to fire it fired up on my end, Tony. I'm just waiting on you to give me a countdown, and we'll get this show on the road, baby. We got a very special countdown uh, today, and I had to slap him in the side of the head to get him to do it, but I'll be more than glad to do it any day of the week. So let's go to <laughs> so let's go to our special countdown. This is Dean Malenko. Tony, I really, really never liked you from the beginning. Three, two, one, play. Championship Wrestling, bringing you great wrestling action, sanctioned by the NWA, National Wrestling Alliance. Hello once again, everyone, and welcome to World Championship Wrestling. I'm Tony Schiavone, your host for this exciting program here today as your ringside with the NWA, the Major League of Professional Wrestling. Now, last week we told you we would have a special on the tournament, tag team tournament for the Jim Crockett Senior Memorial Cup coming up at the Superdome. Of course, that'll be with us a little bit later on here today. U.S. Heavyweight Champion Magnum T.A. is here. The National Heavyweight Champion Tully Blanchard with James J. Dillon. Dusty Rhodes with Baby Doll. Magnum T.A. Nikita Koloff, many other top stars, Jimmy the Boogie Woogie Man Vibe, the World Tag Team Champions, the Midnight Express, and many, many other top stars. We're ready to go. Let's go to the ring. <laughs> How about Tully wearing the robe from Dynamite right here? <laughs> Isn't that something? And the, well, that's National Heavyweight Belt. Okay. Got it. Which was kind of like the U.S. belt, only it had a little bit of gold around it, right? Hey, I don't mean to be, uh, boy, I'm not trying to be negative when I say this. Mm -hmm. But realistically, that was probably JJ Dillon's last TV appearance or one of them. How fucking mm -hmm. cool was it that we got to see JJ on TV one last time on a Turner station? Yeah, it was very cool. He looked great. He really did. Yeah. And I'm glad we brought him in. I'm glad they used him on TV instead of just showing him in the audience, you know, walking out with him. Yep. And it was really cool to be in the backstage area with he and Arn and, and, and Tully. And of course, you know, backstage with us in that one, what we call the, uh, the coach's room. Um, stays, uh, Jerry Lynn. Yeah. And, uh, Jake, the snake stays back there and, um, Dean Malenko. And you talking about a, just a wonderful room to set in when you've got like 20, 30 minutes. It's the best. <laughs> it is that coach's room. I mean, I'll go in there and laugh to a freaking cry. Just, 
I, uh, I was sequestered outdoors with, uh, Eric Bischoff, who sort of set up shop on the uh, little sectional there behind the promo photo area. Mm-hmm. And one by one, as everybody came in, we got to say hello and chit chat, but the best is when Jr. would come over and just hold court. Mm-hmm. Cause Jr. he's well past give a shit. Oh yeah. Well past. Oh yeah. yeah. And, uh, I, 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 that's one of my goals now in life. Is to just get to his level of don't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, he's just let some rip, man. Just mm-hmm. one after another, just right. it's tremendous. So yeah, Eric Bischoff really got a double dose of Jr. that weekend and we all had fun with it, but it was so cool to see JJ again. You know, um, I just know realistically JJ is probably not looking to get booked and be on TV every week. And it's not like AEW necessarily needs him. So sure. if that was our last time we see JJ in sort of a prime time role, I'm glad he got a, what I would call a, a quote unquote proper send off, you know? Yeah. And I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little shilling here. Uh, congratulations and a pat on the back to the, uh, the, uh, all the EVPs and Tony Khan for, <clears throat> realizing and appreciating the past. Oh my gosh. It's so such a breath of fresh air. Yeah. You know, I mean, obviously you and, and Jr. sort of set the tone for that, but you see what they've done with Jake Roberts and Tully Blanchard and Arn Anderson and so many others. It's just cool, man. And I got to tell you, one of the coolest things that ever happened in my wrestling fandom was being backstage that night after Tully finished his match, they cut a promo, you know, just behind gorilla. Mm -hmm. But then there's like that talent viewing area that everybody has to walk through in order to get Mm -hmm. into their dressing rooms and whatever. So Eric and I just happened to be back there hanging out, just waiting on those belts to come back. So we get to our Airbnb and get out of the way and just watch the rest of the show from home. And when he came through, man, every staffer, every employee, every, every rigger, every uh, producer, every talent all stood and clapped. And I don't mean like a standing ovation, like until he acknowledges it. I mean, as he made his way through the crowd, cause there's like a little aisle way pathway that guys could walk through. He shook every hand and he was grinning ear to ear. You could tell what an important moment that was for Tully. You know, it was, it was a happening to the point where Bischoff who normally doesn't sell shit with wrestling. It's just like, yeah, you know, been here, done that, whatever. He turned around and looked at me and went, and like held his arm up. Like I have goosebumps because yeah. it was one of those moments that we talk about a lot on the show where that was real. Sure. That, that was not, Hey, let's do our best to care and let's put on a show and let me pretend. Oh no, that was real. And everyone was paying homage to one of the best performers. And you know, he never really got that send off and now he did. And you could tell, even he didn't have to say it. You could just tell what it meant to him. It was one of the coolest moments of my wrestling fandom. And I, I laughed, I, I wanted to watch that match in the crowd. So we went and stole a seat, Eric and I did with Sam, the security guy's permission. And, uh, when Tully hit that fucking slingshot, man, I was giggling like a little kid. Yeah. It was such a cool moment. Yeah. And I got to, I got to even say it. I got to even call it slingshot suplex, which I was very proud to be able to nudge my way in and be able to say that. And, uh, so that was, that, there you go. There you go. Slingshot suplex. I uh, want to s- say something else about that uh, Tully walkthrough that I did not see because I was, you know, I was obviously doing the show. You were busy. <laughs> I was busy. I was busy doing other things saying that's right. Jr. And all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, but that slingshot suplex is, is still just a, a, a great move. You know, when the end is coming, let's go to Tony Schwanny. They are Tully Blanchard Enterprises. You hear out of the place? First words out of your mouth should be congratulations to the new national heavyweight champion. Congratulations, new national heavyweight champion. That was a very hollow congratulations. You should be more excited because what you saw was a classic demonstration of wrestling skill and how it should be done. It was like taking candy from a baby. I tell you what, you know, Tony Schiavone, you get a lot of people out here that lack maybe a little bit of experience, but they get in there and they do their best and they fight. This guy right here embarrassed his family and everything else. He didn't want to fight. He was in such awe of being in the ring with the National Heavyweight Champion. He didn't know what to do. But that's where you got to take your hat off to the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. At least the two times World Heavyweight Champion, 
and former World Television Champion, and former National Heavyweight Champion, and former superlatives I can't even say, but they all start with former. Dusty Rhodes will get in there and fight you, as you saw last week with the greatest match, where the best man did win, the new National Heavyweight Champion, Tully Blanchard, along with the Administrative Director of our corporation, James J. Dillon. Well, where do we go from here? What is the obvious question? What is the next great step? The Jim Crockett Senior Memorial Cup is obviously the next thing in mind because we got the insurance. Now we're talking about picking up a million dollar payday. And that's a lot of bucks. And it's coming and it's coming soon. We're talking about April in New Orleans and we're gonna be right in the thick of it. In fact, we should be seated number one. We're coming right back. Yeah, baby. I mean, I know that's not the original song, but they at least picked a good one for him. Didn't they? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Look at the kids. <laughs> I, uh, uh, Tully Blanchard classic interview right there. Uh, shitting on it, uh, shitting on the guy who, who did a horrible job for him and putting over the booker. <laughs> Just zoom. I love that. I love when they bring real life into, into their stuff. I always love that. So Tully walks through. And I, uh, I heard about that. Uh, there's another moment that I need to talk about. I can't talk about it this week, but I'll talk about it next week. Remind me. Okay. Okay. And that happened backstage. Actually, there's been like, this will be the third moment. Um, there's been three moments that happened backstage where I know, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, beyond a shadow of a fucking doubt that our company is going to be successful. And Tully Blanchard was one of them. The other was when Eddie Kingston, I don't know if it ever got on social media, it may have. Eddie Kingston addressed everybody in the back after we did the uh, thing for John, John, uh, for Brody Lee. Eddie just. Uh, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, right from the heart. Yeah. And, and then something happened this week, too, that I'll talk about next week. Um, that I know that we're doing things right as a company. I know we got a great leadership. I know Tony Khan's a good guy. And you may be listening to this, rolling your eyes, say, Shivani's sucking up. But I, and, and I don't want to, I don't want to dig down to this too far because you get into the weeds with this bullshit and you can't pull out. But so many people give him shit online and say bad things about our fucking company. And Meltzer and I talked about this before we recorded with, with Jericho the other night. Um, and it was great. To, it was actually great talking to Dave. Dave and I had about a 20 minute conversation before Jericho even came on. And it blows our mind that people are out there wanting companies to fail. Why would somebody yeah. be that way? Yeah. And wh why would, why, w what is wrong with your personality? What was wrong with your upbringing? Were you raised by a couple of parents who were on meth? I, wh what, what is wrong with you to be that way? I don't, I don't get it. And so may you rot in hell. Oh, wow. For the rest of your fucking lives, you nothing happened in pieces of shit. Whoa. That being said, hey, Jimmy Valiant, man, he had a, a great talk. He was tremendous. And this guy he's working with, uh, Bob Owens, is not that much better than the last guy, Don Turner. Help, help me understand. Why, why did you get so heated right there? Because that, it, it just makes me mad. I mean, not many things make me mad. I mean, you can shit on me all you want. But the shit on what we do, you, you just don't fucking get it. And, of course, I get it. Most of you are WWE fanboys, I understand. And I understand how you feel. And many of them are probably just – And anyway, so it just gets me fired up when I hear that because I know, I just know how many great things we're doing, how great of a company we got. And, yeah, we make mistakes. Hell, yeah. Everybody well, makes course. mistakes. Uh, but, fuck, it just – uh Wonderful place to be. And, and you saw that. You saw how happy people were in the back. No, I've seen it every time I've yeah. been there. I mean, listen, right. no, no places without politics, No, not, right. not in sales. I mean, it's not exclusive to wrestling is what I'm trying to right. say. Like, there's problems everywhere. Things could be better everywhere, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. No, There is no utopia. Mm -hmm. You know, well, I guess there is, but hopefully nobody, nobody we know gets to go there soon. But yeah. still, right. it's just like, come on. Can we just be Damn. positive? I'm positive this will be good. Answer from the Russians on that lucrative contract for this 
U.S. heavyweight title. And Magnum, you just got to wonder, maybe it's the Kremlin behind this, not letting the Koloff sign any contract. Well, you know, I'm getting a little fed up with all these political negotiations to begin with. This is professional wrestling. I don't really care what the Kremlin wants. I don't really care what Nikita Koloff wants. But what I'm tired of is tired of waiting, waiting for the time to come around when he has enough guts to walk in that ring with me. Now, it's real plain and simple. United States heavyweight title is what he wants. I signed a contract, whether he thinks it's lucrative enough or not, that's beside the point. It is a fair contract. Jim Crockett Promotions wrote it all out. Everything's on the up and up. And I'll defend the United States Heavyweight Championship against Nikita Koloff whenever he deems it fit to get himself in that ring, get himself all fired up, and come try to take me out. You know what I think the problem is here, that on reviewing all the things they've done, Ivan Koloff's realized that maybe he's pushed his nephew Nikita in a little over his head. Maybe he's pushed him into a situation where he's going to embarrass all of Russia by showing all the people out there that they're not half the athletes they think they are. Now, Nikita, you always look real good when you're blindsiding people when you got somebody else out there helping you. But the fact of the matter is that when we were out here fighting on television, if there hadn't been about 20 guys to come pull us apart, you might still be laying out here on this floor. This belt's around my waist. This is the bait. This is the challenge that I'm presenting to you. The contract signed when you're man enough to walk in the ring. Then and only then will we settle this issue. All right. Those words from the U.S. champion, still the U.S. champion, Magnum T.A. Let's go to the ring. Okay, did 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 I really blame blame the Kremlin for all this angle? <laughs> yes. Now, in fairness, he's been talking about it a little bit. Yeah, uh, and so have the Russians. So you double down on it. But yeah, that's uh, a little <laughs> stupid. Yeah, well, it maybe a lot stupid. Yeah, but you know, it's it's 1986, right? Sure. Cold War. It's Cold War. Yeah, you got to sell it, baby. Got to sell it, man. Absolutely. So. Ah, man, I was, I was so, so thin and young and good looking and happy back then, man. Uh, I'm going to tell you, you seem like quite the ladies man down in AEW. I don't think you need to worry about that. Just have a big glass of water. There you go. Yeah. So I, uh, you were saying that you probably thought the, uh, I want to clear things up here. Yeah, we should, uh, we you, should definitely switch gears. We don't want to double no, down. No, 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 no. We're not switching gears. Okay. You thought that the best part of you guys being sequestered in the back there was Jr. coming and seeing you, but you know, the best part was rebel coming back to see you. I can't speak on that. Yes, you can. You can all, well, you couldn't speak at that time. No, because it, it looked like, uh, Take my breath it, looked away. Like, it looked like four guys with their mouth agape. Um, but well, well, here's the, if we're going to be pervs here, here's what happened. You came over and you said, Hey, have y'all seen Tully? And I said, yeah, he just came by a minute ago. It was great to see him. And then he said, have you seen so-and-so? And I said, yeah. And then your eyes get big and you say, have you seen rebel? And I'm like, no. And you said she should wear jeans every day of her life. <laughs> and I said, what? And he said, don't leave. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, rebel. Look, it's the adfreeshows.com group. Oh, <laughs> yes, sir. And yeah, I was like, okay, I get what Tony's talking about. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you did. And of course, as you know, Britt's a good buddy of mine and she wanted to take a picture with Eric Bischoff so badly. Oh, that was fun. When he came back around, I said, oh, so look, you still got it. He said, I never lost it. <laughs> it was just fun. Eric, Eric had a good time. I can tell sometimes yeah. when Eric, you know, he's happy that wrestling's in the rearview mirror, but then he'll go and just get to do the fun stuff, like hanging out backstage, not really working on the show. And then. You know, they come get us five minutes beforehand, that type of deal. Like we had, he's like, dude, this is fun. Yeah. You know, that was a fun day. And, and in real life, I, I've said this so many times and they keep me young on the road. Brit and rebel are friends of mine and we do hang out and, uh, and they like to hang out with me because they know I'm harmless. Number one. Of course. And, and then, uh, then now we've got, uh, you know, gallows and Anderson, uh, hanging out after the show and you got to run from them or you'll be drunk for five days. Yes. So you got, I, I, I no, got no, no, really, not drunk. I think the term they use is over brothered. <laughs> yeah. Over brother five days because I'm thinking, oh boy, the alcohol content just really, really ratcheted up after the show now. So yeah, that, I, I, I'm sure they thinking I'm avoiding them. Well, they're because right. I, because I am Yeah. because, because I got work to do the next day and I can't stay out till like seven or 8 AM and drink. But if you because could, I'm, you'd like to do it with them. I'd love to do it with them. They'd be the best. So, but I'm, you're not going to remember much of it, but people will tell no. you afterwards. You had a great time, right? 
There's that brain buster suplex by gorgeous Jimmy Garvin on one of the mall keys. That gets it done. You know, I, I liked, I liked the sequined, whatever he calls that. That's heat, man. Yeah, that is heat, man. Kissing his wife before and after beautiful hair. Just Jimmy was good, man. Jimmy had a good run with Ric Flair too. Uh, All here right, we, here we go. What a promo. Yeah, that's right. You know, Wahoo McDaniels is a very close personal friend of Dusty Rhodes. And I have one word for Jimmy Garvin from Des Wahoo McDaniel, and that is he's coming. Don't worry about these guys that you may beat on TV. That's fine. But Wahoo McDaniels after you. All right. And that was words from Baby Doll to gorgeous Jimmy Garvin with Precious. We'll be back right after this timeout. Have you ever seen more misplaced confidence in your life than Baby Doll at a promo? I know. Lord bless her. She did her job, yeah. but she'll say the most elementary sentence ever and put her hands on her hips. Like now what motherfucker <laughs> follow that. And here he is. David Crockett on special assignment today. The Columbia school of broadcasting is using him today as a bad example. I know Tony, you're being just happy to fill in for him. As a matter of fact, I'd be happy if you'd fill in for him permanently. Now, a lot of things going on and Tony, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm going to ask you for a sensible opinion for once. And if you can muster it up, give it to me. The Midnight Express are the World Tag Team Champions. Is that right? That's correct. So then it's a foregone conclusion. We're going to be the number one team in the Jim Crockett Senior Memorial Cup $1 million Tag Team Tournament, right? I, foregone conclusion. Well, we got to be the number one seed, right? I'm sure. I'm, I'm glad you agree. we got to be the number one because we're the World Tag Team Champions, and that means that we're the best there are. And now, Road Warriors. I understand the Road Warriors want a title shot. Precious Paul Ellering mouthing off. Let me tell you something, Ellering. What you better do with your Road Warriors is you better get a little bit more finger paint and put it on their faces, and you better get them in the gym and get them in shape and then take them out in the ring and have them beat somebody credible and get a little bit of a reputation and then come see me because right now they are just not ready for the Midnight Express. I would hesitate to think what would happen to them if they got in the ring with a couple of guys as tough as lover boy Dennis and beautiful Bobby. Now... Rock and Roll Express last week on TV, everybody saw they physically attacked me, Tony Schiavone, like cowards. They attacked me two on one. You were standing right here. You know they did. They tried to beat me up, and even two of them, as you can see, could not finish me off because I'm a tough, macho kind of guy. But that's the kind of people Rock and Roll Express are. They're back jumpers. They're cowards. They like two on one. They didn't want to stick around one on one with me where the odds would be even. They wanted to double up on me. Rock and roll, you cowards, you back jumpers, and you're never going to get the World Tag Team Championship belts back because the Midnight Express is more than capable of taking care of you. And you're trying to put me in that cage, you two punks, and I promise you something, there's going to be a lot of trouble because that's the only reason they ever wanted me to put me in a cage in the first place is because they're scared of me and they're scared of the greatest team in professional wrestling today. Loverboy Dennis and beautiful Bobby, the Midnight Express. What up, losers? It's the real mean girl, Danny Jordan, a.k.a. Tony Schiavone's favorite wrestler, as seen on AEW Dark. Hit pause on your watch along right now, and I'll tell you when to hit play again in just a moment. I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere. Hey, SaveWithConrad.com has been saving people money everywhere all across the map. Justin up in Kernersville, North Carolina, left us a five-star review, and he said, Jimmy and Jennifer were amazing. The process was very clearly communicated and I knew the status of my loan every step of the way. I was able to cut a point and a half from my interest rate and save $180 a month. It was an extremely smooth transaction and completely stress-free. Kudos to you guys. Now, kudos to you, Justin, for hearing our commercials here on the podcast and deciding, you know what? This is worth a shot. It's no cost. It's no obligation. I don't need perfect credit. And if they can't save me money, they won't waste my time. So what am I waiting for? Justin did it and he's saving 180 bucks a month. How much money can you save? Find out right now for free at savewithconrad.com. And oh yeah, we're licensed in more than 40 states. NMLS number 65084, equal housing lender, savewithconrad.com. Do you own or rent your home? Sure you do. And I bet it can be hard work. But you know what's easy? Bundling policies with Geico. Geico makes it easy to bundle your homeowners or renters insurance along with your auto policy. It's a good thing too, because you already have so much to do around your home. Go to Geico.com, get a quote and see how much you could save. It's Geico easy. Visit Geico.com today. That's Geico.com. If you've experienced a loss of motivation, energy, or sex drive, or if you're noticing that you're a little softer around the middle than you used to be, 
It could be your testosterone levels have dropped by the time men reach the age of 30. In most cases, their T levels have started to decline and low T can lead to a loss of muscle mass, depression, lack of energy, and low sex drive. The good news is you can remedy this with test X nine. This revolutionary new formula comprises nine clinically proven ingredients in measured amounts to naturally boost your body's testosterone production, which will maximize your performance and drive in a professionally developed supplement featuring magnesium activation technology experience increases in strength, energy, and sex drive, as well as improved sleep and well-being. If you want to take it to the next level, you can maximize your results with ultimate test stack, which combines test X nine with T assist an estrogen control and liver support blend to turbocharge your T levels and leave you feeling like a new man. You'll be amazed what effect raising your T levels will do to your overall performance and well-being. Don't settle for average man up at legacy and use code WHW for an additional 10% off your order. That's legacy sups.com. That's L E G A C Y S U P P S.com. Legacy S U P P S.com. And the promo code is W H W to save an additional 10%. And, uh, <clears throat> this is Nick Aldis's product. Check it out. It's what the NWA world champion uses. And you should too. It's legacy sups.com. And the promo code is W H W to save 10% right now. Stand by. Hit play now. Do it. Do it now. Boy, how hot was that crowd for the rock and rolls? Wow, man. It was unbelievable. I don't even, I don't even think they were prompted. No, they were just, they saw him and they were chanting it. I mean, that mm-hmm. lets you know, you know, that it's working. I, I think, uh, Columbia school of broadcasting using David Crockett as a bad example was, yeah. was right off the cuff type. He also had, a, I was thinking about when baby doll was doing her promo, uh, Jim had a line. I'm not going to get it right. And this was more recent than, than back then where he said, Tim Horner's promo was, was like promos were like a, a guilty man doing a deposition. <laughs> Just, uh, he, he could say it, man. I, I, I know he said it better than that, but, uh, look how Bobby would look. <laughs> They would just do, they would do some subtle creative shit in the ring and, uh, just, uh, boy, the more I watch this, the more I miss the old days. Dude, it's the best. Yeah. Let, let mean, me give you a, a, an idea. I'm just th- throwing it out there. Okay. What if there is a temporary pause in our 1986 venture? Mm-hmm. What if we started reaching out to some guys from that era? Mm-hmm having some conversations with them to fill some time. I like it. You know, I know we could get Bobby and we could get Dennis and certainly we could get Ricky and we could get Robert and we could probably stretch a little bit of time, but still be sort of on brand, Mm -hmm. you know, now listen, if we get the word that, Hey, it ain't coming back, then we'll make a different decision. But if we're thinking I was got to buy, buy a few weeks here or there, no big deal. I think we'll be okay. We could get Ronnie Garvin. We probably could get Jimmy Garvin. Magnum, Tully, Magnum, Arn, yeah, Tully. JJ. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying there is, there is sort of companion pieces that we could do with this while we sort of get everything sorted out. Right. And we're going to try to get as many, uh, in the can as we can. Yeah, absolutely. Get ahead. Yeah. And, and, and I know that sucks because a lot of, a lot of folks won't be able to watch along with us, but we'll still at least have some holdover. By the way, uh, have you had a chance to listen to the new Kurt Angle show that drops on Sundays yet? I have not. I think you would dig it. Okay. Kurt is, uh, very transparent. We just recently recorded a show on his rookie year. It was actually a two-parter because his rookie year was so big. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about this. They did an undefeated streak and he won the intercontinental title and the European title at the same time. Mm. Then he won the King of the ring. And then he beat the rock to be world champion. That's all in his first year of the business. That's getting a pretty good push. Well, what I was surprised about is he offered on his own payday information. Oh, and that's something that even when you go back to, you listen to like the very first episodes. Oh, look at this. He's making him clean his shoes. Did you see that? (laughs) That's what I'm saying. They would do so many. (laughs) Oh my. They would do so many creative, subtle things and look at him talking (laughs) shit. Let's track it. 
Loverboy down into the big knee. Look how tough these guys are, man. Oh, yeah. Anyway, okay. just saying, I think you would dig that angle show. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm going to check it out. The, 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 Cornette is saying how tough the opponents are. And so what Dennis was doing, he was having that guy, putting that guy's arm around him. And Dennis was screaming, help me, help me. <laughs> Great stuff. Yeah. I loved him. I really, really did. And you know, him on the butt. Look, here, go tag yeah. out. There you go. There you go. You know, it's almost like when you were a kid, cause you had mm -hmm. like 38 brothers and sisters, right? No, I had one. I look at him just smiling during the offense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, like with my sister and I guess with all brothers and sisters, when you're little kids, somebody starts to like take the, the other person's fist, mm -hmm. like stop hitting yourself. Stop yeah, hitting right, yourself. Right. right. <laughs> look, the, look, mom. Yeah. They're hitting yourself. Yeah. The midnight express here are doing stop hitting yourself. Mm -hmm. on broadcast to, I mean, on cable television, right? Look at this guy, this guy is flopping trying around. to swim away. <laughs> Conrad, Con to Conrad's looking like, what the fuck, what the fuck do I have here? <laughs> oh, now he's going to grind him up a little bit. There you go. <laughs> oh, this was not a good day for job guys. No, this was, no, this was not a good Well, at least he's selling, buddy. Oh, he's doing his best. Yeah. And so, <laughs> oh, they just are fucking with him now. <laughs> oh God. Oh, hey, speaking of 1986, mm -hmm. we, um, we're getting going on the macho man intercontinental that was debuted. And, uh, either 85 or 86, but he held it until it was replaced, um, years later. Anyway, that'll be coming out soon here to adfreeshows.com. But it's fun to go back and watch as we're looking for old footage here, uh, from Jim Crockett promotions. It's fun to go back and watch old WWF TV in this same era, mm -hmm. just to get a flavor for what the competition was doing, you know? Mm. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, I know. And I was, uh, this was during the era of superstars and challenge, I guess back then. Yeah. Primetime wrestling. Yeah. Back then maybe on TNT on USA and Tuesday night Titans. I think they were going Tuesday night Titans time. was the real deal. Yeah. Oh, well, I loved it. I absolutely, Vince was wonderful in that man. It was just great, great stuff. They have poured this poor sap out of, they poured him out of the ring twice. Yeah. They're, they're having, they're having fun just beating the shit out of these guys. Yeah, they really are. By the way, I want to give everybody a heads up. The, uh, the last show here, um, was March 8th. Of course, this one's happening on March 15th. They had a 2 PM show in Roanoke, Virginia. They did $42,000 at the gate. That was a record. Um, later that day, they'd be in Atlanta at the Omni and they had, uh, rock and rolls and midnights in a cage with Jim Crockett in a cage or Jim Cornette in a cage. Rather. I think they called it Betty Lou 79,000 was the gate that night at the Omni. So on that same day, 42,000, which was a record and then 79,000 at the Omni. And here we go. Some of the hmm. press for being with us this afternoon for over 50 years, the Jim Crockett organization has insisted on presenting the finest in quality and exciting spectator entertainment for the last number of years. It's founder, the late Jim Crockett senior brought to millions of fans, the finest in professional wrestling throughout this country. This tradition of excellence and this highest standards of competition continues under the able direction of his family. Today, we're pleased to announce the selection of the host city for the 1986 James Crockett Sr. Memorial Cup, featuring the top talent in professional wrestling. After a lengthy review of the many cities bidding for this fine event, that final decision was made and New Orleans, Louisiana was selected. We're here to present some of the details regarding that stellar competition, its all-star participants, and ticket information we know that all our wrestling fans will want to hear. With us today is the family of Mr. Crockett, including David, Jackie, Francis, and the president of our company, James Crockett, Jr. But first, it is my sincere privilege to present the wife of our founder, Mrs. James Crockett, Sr. Mrs. Crockett. Thank you. I and my family are very honored to have this tag team tournament named after my late husband, Jim Crockett. 
He was one of the original founders of the National Wrestling Alliance. And we wish for the Superdome in New Orleans a big success on the first annual Jim Crockett Sr. Memorial Cup Tag Team Tournament. And we look forward to possibly having next year's tournament in Charlotte, North Carolina. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a word from the Executive Vice President of the New Orleans Superdome, Mr. Bob Johnson. We had the super. Did we just watch this same thing on syndicated TV the other day? Yes, we did. Well, not the same thing. We saw the Bob Johnson interview. Oh, we saw Francis talking too. I think we did both. Oh, you mean, you mean Mrs. Crockett? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't remember seeing because I worked with Francis so long, uh, and that, that close up of her, she always, she, she, she had a great laugh and always had a great sense of humor and you could just tell she was ready to, to just bust out laughing there. I just, because I know Francis so well and yeah. And this is part of uh, Bob Johnson. And uh, I think Jim Osius, by the way, who's, who's born us all to death here worked. I believe he worked at the Greensboro Coliseum for okay. years and then Crockett's hired him along with Rob Garner. Here's Rob. Rob worked at WBT, uh, WBTV. Uh, for a long time in, in sales and Rob and Jim Oshis came on and worked and started working for WCW when they were bought by Turner and, um, uh, Jim Oshis, uh, he was a good guy. And I, I don't know how long he worked for us. Rob Garner worked for us to the end. Jim Oshis, I'm not so sure, but I remember Jim, <laughs> Jim Oshis had this thing in Atlanta. And this is w, during the WCW era. And they brought in, I, I believe I got this right. They brought in like event managers and building managers from all over to have a little get together. And OSHA's wanted Dusty Rhodes to speak to them. So they had it at, at this place of the Omni. Oh, look at this. Bill after. Oh, God. 24 team field for the Jim Crockett Senior Memorial Cup and the $1 million were prepared by the editors of Pro Wrestling Illustrated on March 9th. The top 10 seeds are in the order of seeding, the Legion of Doom, the Road Warriors, America's Team, Dusty Rhodes and Magnum TA, the National Wrestling Alliance World Tag Team Champions, the Midnight Express, NWA World Champion Ric Flair and World TV Champion Arn Anderson, from Canada, former AWA Champion Rick Martel and Canadian International Champion Dino Bravo, the Rock and Roll Express, from Japan, Tiger Mask, and former NWA champion, Giant Baba. Also entering the tournament are the Koloffs from the Eastern Bloc. From Australia, the Kiwi Sheepherders. And finally, number 10, the Mid-South Tag Team Champions, Ted DiBiase and Steve Williams. Thank you. Yay. Can you believe that the Midnights are third? Well, of course, my God, you see that kid in the tan? Yeah. All right. It's Andy Kaplan. The next kid is the guy that, uh, came after me to do the, and I can't remember his name. He did the, uh, Charlotte baseball team after I, I left. Uh, but Andy oh, we Kaplan. Gotta listen on. to this, man. Thank okay. you. You know, anybody that's been involved in wrestling knows of the tradition of the Crockett family. And certainly we were fortunate enough to start a tradition with wrestling in the Superdome. And it's become one of the greatest spectator events in the world today. And we were very pleased to go together with the Superdome management and be able to put a bid in that got this fantastic tournament for our fans, for all the fans in the world. And you're talking about history being made, something that could never be done. This is the inaugural event, the first time ever that this cup will be at stake in $1 million with all the top teams in the world today. It's going to be the most fantastic spectator event, something that no one can afford to miss. We do have one thing that we want to add is that I have always had a dream that the Superdome would be the site of the NWA World's Championship changing hands. And we've put together another lucrative contract to give our fans the opportunity to see just such a situation. And we've had Ric Flair pull out of the tournament for the $1 million in the Jim Crockett Senior Memorial Trophy to defend his world's heavyweight title against a guy that I've been fortunate enough to be associated with a long time, 
tag teamed with some, one of the first headliners of the young superstar of the first Superdome event ever. The man that I feel can beat Ric Flair, where the fans will see the world's title change hands, the American dream, Dusty Rhodes. <laughs> I know, Bill, that's going to create some problems with some of the, the tag teams that are involved. Well, we have studied this, and Magnum TA has chosen Ronnie Garvin to replace Dusty Rhodes because of his uh, offensive ability, and Arn Anderson has taken Tully Blanchard on. However, the seedings will remain the same. Seedings will not change. Well, I think it's going to be the most fantastic thing ever. We will have a surprise main event for the afternoon session. This is the first time ever also that we've had a, a tournament of this magnitude where there'll have to be an afternoon event to have the first round matches to get them out of the way so that when the people come for the evening session, they'll be into the finals. But we'll have a surprise main event, some great attractions. That'll be a $10 first come first serve for the whole afternoon session. That ticket will not be good that evening. And then they get that evening, of course, this fantastic match with all the top talent anybody's ever dreamed of seeing in a fantastic tag team tournament plus the World's Heavyweight Championship, and we hope to have one other great main event for that also. Thank you. I thought Bill Watts came off pretty well right there. Yeah, he did a good job. Well, Bill could do it, man. Bill was, Bill was one of those guys you listened to and you thought, man, that fucker's... Speaking of, speaking of fuckers. So then we, we heard the announcement from Bill Watts. Now you and Tully Blanchard are fourth seed. That's a pretty good seed. Well, number one, Tony Zavani, I want to talk about one thing. Flair discussed this with myself and Tully Blanchard, and we all felt that he should get a crack at Dusty by himself so he could pay back a few little things that Dusty's been doing to our family personally. So we decided as a unit that Flair would do this, okay? Okay. All right. Number two, the fact that I should be seated number one is simply on the fact that I am world television champion. That's what's got me perturbed. Seated fourth is not good enough. I'm not fourth rate. Tully Blanchard is not fourth rate. Rick Flair is not fourth rate, okay? The fact that he's my partner, well, <laughs> who else? Anytime you put a combination, it could have very well been Tully and Flair, me and Flair, me and Tully. So that's fine and dandy. The only thing that's got me perturbed is the seating arrangement. You understand? But rest assured, we'll beat who we have to to achieve what we have to, and that means a million dollars split two ways, Tony Giovanni, as a hunk of cash. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I know that. Now, that aside, you've got a young man up here, Michael Jackson, that last week you gave a plug as being a good athlete, being a good wrestler, a lot of talent, granted all that. So what I felt, being the athlete that I am, being the world television champion that I am, I'm going to do what Dusty Rhodes never did. I'm going to go out here week in and week out and defend this world television title against only the top competitors. So we're going to give Michael Jackson a shot at the most prestigious belt in the world today other than Ric Flair's world heavyweight title, Tony Giovanni, and right here on national television. Okay. Arn Anderson will defend his world TV title right here, right now. Let's go to the ring. What do you think? I like it. It's going to be good. Because they always gave Mike Jackson a lot of, you know, they gave him a lot. As far as, and of course, as, as you said, at 95 years old, he's still wrestling. Yeah. Mr. Alabama, was, baby. Yeah. He was competing with Arn Anderson for bald spot of the year too on this one. Uh, so anyway, Jim, this is this, and, and it's, it's funny. I remember the story. I remembered it vividly now. And I love how this show brings out memories for me. Jim Osher's had all the, uh, 